Stu Gatz here. Whether you're into podcasts about ghastly crimes or hip-hop rhymes, there's always something new to discover on Spotify. With a mix of originals and many of the world's most popular shows, listening to podcasts on Spotify is easy. Just open the app, tap Browse, and dive into their growing library. Subscribe to your favorites, including our entire archive, so you'll never miss a show. You can also download podcasts for those moments when you're up in the air or going underground. Podcasts on Spotify are streaming right now. Go check them out today. Holiday cash. Here's where to get it. MyBookie.ag is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. There are a lot of football, basketball, and hockey games. You can score big every day. Man up. Play like the pros. The money line, side, or total. MyBookie.ag is your hookup for all your betting with all the lines and super fast payouts. Join now and MyBookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code CHAMPION to activate the order. Don't leave the money on the table. MyBookie.ag promo code CHAMPION and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play with a pro's play because they get paid. MyBookie.ag This is the worst of the Dan Lebatard show with the Stugatz podcast. So Stugatz is paying off a lot of debt all at once. Uh, he is now that sound you heard was one of his candy rings falling off. He is now paying a punishment that is the Phil Jackson. He's got to wear 11, fr- uh, 11 rings on his hand. Right. Uh, do you have 11? It looks like nine. Is it indeed 11? Uh, I believe I have 11 rings on my uh, on my fingers right now. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a missing ring. <laughs> it's okay because in my personal record book, <laughs> Phil Jackson only has two rings. He didn't win six with the Bulls because anyone could have won six with the Bulls. And then he just chose the Lakers. Because someone eventually was going to win with Kobe and Shaq. And Phil said, hey, I'll go there, and I'll win three with Kobe and Shaq. So take nine away, and I should really only be wearing two rings. Okay. I'll give him the Knicks ones. I'm not sure. Okay. Because <laughs> it was before your hey, time. Hey, he played on the team. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. That's very magnanimous of you. Made some contributions. In your personal record book. <laughs> I'm telling you, how are we going to get this book printed? <laughs> Stugatz's personal record book. Uh, we allow Stugatz to rewrite history, sports history. Because I'm telling you, there's a book there. ESPN Publishing, get on it. And I appreciate if they do it before someone else steals the idea and does it themselves. Because oh, no. I, It's got to be you, though. It has to be okay. you. You're yes. the character for a personal record book because that's the most nonsensical thing in the world. Right. Well, I'm talking to Teddy Bridgewater, who stole our idea for another book. And now I, I, I've heard, I read, that he's making major dollars off of this book is he that's what i heard yeah well, off of our, our, idea. our idea was better can you get me guillermo would you be kind enough please to get me a list of some of the best characters for our teddy bridgewater book uh because i just want to read that to the people to remind them of because our listeners are funny man and it, the, uh, one of the things i love best about our show might be oh, man it's right up there at the top is um how competitive our community is about creativity and so uh, they wrote the book for us. We didn't write the book. We were just talking about how Teddy Bridgewater, his name sounds like a teddy bear that would save a river from a or save a, uh, a town from a flood. Right. And so we created a bunch of characters in this kid's book and I uh, with actual names of athletes. And I don't think we could get it published for that reason. I think all those names, we can't just traffic in names that aren't ours and sell them without copywriting right so we might not have ever gotten the book published but it was a good idea for a book it was and and, uh, this is a good idea for a book stugatz's personal record book is a good idea for a book so i did uh i know you're not going to believe me but i actually went back like you know to sporting you know to sporting events and things that happened before i was even born and i did some research last night I can absolutely put this book together with the proper research and the proper help because I'm not a writer. I'm not an author. I don't know what I'm doing, but I did some research. There is a funny idea here. So I would like someone at ESPN. Maybe I should call someone. Oh, here we go. And but this, someone at ESPN oh, to wait, reach out to me. Wait a minute. This preferably is, at around one fifteen today, and let's start flushing this out and make a book. Or I'll call someone. I don't know how this works. How does it work? Do I, I, I call say, someone? I, I say the way that it works is write the book. Well, but, I mean, yes. really? Yeah. Not just the idea. I mean, I got to write the whole thing first. I would say that that's usually the way you are right now. You're already. Can you believe what Stugatz is doing right now? Stugatz wants his name on the face of a book with the cover and the glory, but doesn't want to do any of the work other than some research he did last night about who he's got to call to do the work. 
that that is the laziest authorship I've ever seen in my life, and it's right. a marvel that you are the guy who always criticizes Kevin Durant for easy paths. Yeah. Like, think about what just happened there in our conversation. Yeah. Your last contribution to this book will be thinking about it last night. Pretty much. <laughs> you want a New York Times bestseller with your face on it that you don't contribute anything to, even though it's Stugatz's personal record book. You're right. But really what I'm angling, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I'll write it. Like, listen, last night I started ranking uh, the top 50 baseball players of all time, and I'm telling you right now, Babe Ruth's not on it. <laughs> That's going to make news. That's going to help sell the book when you do when you have someone else do the promotional round. I'm telling you. So I, I'm happy. I will write the book. I just don't know how to go about getting a book published. That's right. all. I don't know who I'm supposed to call, who I talk I, to. I, I'm okay I, researching and writing the book. <laughs> I mean, does ESPN, do they have people who do this? like <laughs> Write books for people? <laughs> Ghost write books? <laughs> <laughs> write books for the famous? Yeah, usually that's something you would do with, like, you know, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Not Stu Gantz. But someone I can talk to that can, you know, maybe guide me. Give me some guidance. That's all. Yes, we have for. an entire publishing division. We do? Disney's a big company. <laughs> yes. Wow. Disney produces a good deal of content and appears to be growing. Let's get on this. All right. I think this is one of those things that uh, after it fails, we'll look at each other and say, well, of course, who would want that? <laughs> Many buzzards writing in that it's fleshing out. It's not flushing out. We'd flesh out the idea. I thought it's flushing. <laughs> oh, it's flesh. Uh, been, sorry, not right. this We've been over this. Um, I thought we landed on flushing, which is why I went there. All right. Yeah. Um, hold on. Speaking of flushing, the Marlins. I want to get Rob Manfred on the line, and I want to ask him some uncomfortable questions. I want the commissioner of baseball to come on a show that's not commissioner friendly right? and answer some difficult questions. And I want pressure brought to bear on this man to answer some questions on what happened with this Giancarlo Stanton trade, because I believe that New York is benefiting and therefore baseball is benefiting and everyone's celebrating baseball right now. And there's a lonely voice in south florida screaming that demands to be heard and i think the commissioner of baseball needs to come on here and answer some questions that are not friendly not this safe space where we're real easy on commissioners because we have partnerships with the sports and so i don't know how i need to do this mike i need your help in doing this i'm doing it right now publicly i am demanding that rob manfred come on this radio show and quit hiding with his 1.2 billion dollar purchase price that he's so happy about when they treated South Florida like a brothel again after getting their taxpayer-funded stadium. They treated again like a brothel with Major League's approval, putting Jeter in office, even though they knew Jeter didn't have the money to do this. They just wanted to get the price up to $1.2 billion, and in doing so, they incurred an amount of debt that made them move the Stanton contract for that amount of debt. That was agreed to before Jeter, Jeter had a plan. Jeter didn't walk in and get given a team. He had a plan, and that plan was to tell baseball exactly how he planned to run his business. So baseball signed off on this, and I want Rob Manfred to come on here and answer some difficult questions. Uh, come on, Commissioner. Like, Let's not hide and let's not play politics and let's not do this soft stuff that, co that commissioners do. Come and defend your sport against something that it did to its customers in South Florida. Your sport doesn't deserve a fan in South Florida. Your sport is to blame for everything that's happened in South Florida with baseball interest, and you need to come and defend your sport with your face and your voice against somebody who has the facts on what happened here and saw how badly you betrayed South Florida. Come and speak on behalf of your sport, Commissioner. You need to answer some difficult questions, okay? And I don't care who at this company gets mad at me because I'm going after a commissioner of a corporate partner. This commissioner needs to come on here, and he needs to answer some questions. and needs to answer some questions about the facts of what happened here. Not on one of these friendly platforms. Come and do a difficult interview, Manfred, because what you guys did here, you don't deserve the customers that you have in South Florida. What few you have remaining... You don't deserve them because you betrayed them too many times using South Florida as a brothel. Don Lebertard. What did I just hear you saying about CPR? CRP? What was it? What was that acronym? That that hideous thing that I don't want anywhere near the show? CSR. What is that? Corporate Social Responsibility. Oh, 
bleep off. Stugats. Like, what is that? <laughs> Man, why'd you hire me? This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Stugats is paying a grid of death punishment. He's got to wear the Phil Jackson rings. They're all candy rings over his every finger. Uh, how has it been easier than you thought? Harder than you thought? About what you thought? Uh, harder than I thought. They don't fit around my thumbs, so I had to double up on, on a couple of fingers here because uh, I have fat fingers. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I can't really type. I can't do... Some of the things I need to do in order to do this show the way I want to do the show. So it's kind of like being in a straight jacket, which I did earlier this week. That's right. Yeah. That is what you did earlier this week. Tired of this. Mike last time. night got a 15 seconds of bidet water from my bidet in his <laughs> face. Uh, that's video. That's on at Levitard Show if you want to see it. Mike Ryan had to pay a grid of death punishment, got 15 seconds, and I was so uh, disoriented that I forgot to give him a towel. When he was done, like I just sort of walked out of the room laughing. Right. And Mike was too polite to use any of my towels. I thought he would just grab one of the towels that were there, one of the clean towels. All I only use my towels once. Right. I mean, Mike knows where the towels are. You put them away. Whatever. I use a towel. I wear like clothes the way that Dwayne Wade and Russell Westbrook do. Every time I have a towel, I use it once, and then it gets put in the garbage disposal. Never to touch a body again. Am I doing another one tomorrow? Yeah, you're uh, dressing like pilot. Oh God, he's in a toga. He's got to wear a laurel wreath. That's Who? easy. Oh, a pilot? No, it's like uh, it's called the the pompous pilot instead of Pontius pilot. So he's gonna be in a toga. Got to okay. wear a wreath on his head. Okay, right. very good. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Get instant gold status at Shell. Join the Fuel Rewards program now at fuelrewards.com slash gold. Here's your Sports Center update. Aaron Rodgers on his comeback says, hopefully it gives a lift to some of the guys, but I'm not coming back to save this team. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> That's cute, Aaron. That's cute, Aaron. Aaron, cute, cute. Aaron you, 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 Aaron. Uh, oh, it's man, probably boys. better for your long-term future if you don't, though. Yeah, yeah probably better if you yeah. let those bums, that army of schlubs, get fired without you. The Marlins have traded outfielder Marcel Ozuna to the Cardinals for prospects. And finally, in a recent interview with MSNBC's headliner show, George Clooney's longtime friend, Randy Gerber, revealed that Clooney once gifted his closest friends $1 million each and paid their taxes on the funds. There's a group of guys we call the boys, Gerber explained. George had called me and the boys and said, hey, mark September 27, 2013 on your calendar. Everyone's going to come to my house for dinner. When the boys arrived at Clooney's place, black designer luggage bags were set on the table for each guest. George told the group, listen, I want you guys to know how much you've meant to me. I came to L.A. I slept on your couches. I'm so fortunate in my life to have all of you, and I couldn't be where I am today without you. So it was really important to me that while we're still all here together, that I get back. So I want you to all open your suitcases. When the boys opened up their custom cases, a million dollars worth of $20 bills awaited them. Every one of us, 14 of us, got a million dollars. Every single one of us, Gerber recounted. We were in shock. Like, what is this? That's pretty cool. That is so awesome, man. Right? Yeah. Pay the taxes on it, too. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> No matter what your budget is, take the J.C. Penny Holiday Challenge and find surprising gifts at even more surprising prices. Save on toys, apparel, and name brand gifts your family will absolutely love. Come into the store or go to jcp.com and get everything on your list for less than you think. J.C. Penny. For all the latest headlines and information, tune to the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. It's really hard to find. Um anything negative about that story right no matter what your cynicism is no matter how cynical you can be about things you can't that you read that story and you're like well yeah maybe maybe you get mad at him because he can be so flippant with money and he has so much of it that he can do that but it's hard to find criticism with that story right i mean that yeah it'd be even for me like i could find criticism in anything right, but can. how can i criticize that 
I mean, people who helped him out along the way, and he gave back to those people. That is really yeah, cool. Yeah, to be able to do it, that had to be fun for him to do in real time, just like to do the mechanics of, uh, let's go do this in a suitcase with 20s and like just have them walk into the room, and you are you know what's in there, and they don't know what's in there. Yeah, is that giving you any ideas? or? I mean, you got 70 million view, uh, viewers on HQ, I'm thinking... Yeah. Well, this is one of the things that I, I wanted to, I want to discuss with you and the audience this because uh, I wasn't talking specifically me. I was thinking the shipping container. I was thinking me. Uh, yeah, I was thinking me. All me. No one else. I've done that in various forms for the shipping container. Oh, I'm still waiting. Um, so I'm curious about this because this is something Stu and I were talking about during the break and sort of giggling with laughter because. Uh, many of you know, look, there are a lot of people like me at ESPN, gas bags, know-it-alls with opinions. There aren't a lot of people like Stu Gatz on this show, uh, uh, at this network, and there aren't a lot of people like the shipping container at this network with uh, with roles on air like this. So what ends up happening, Mike, and it's funny to me that this happens, is you get from Stu Gatz in the last segment, just no matter what we're talking about, Stu Gatz is always looking out for how does it serve him, which is somehow within him deeply unlikable and deeply likable at the same time. It's weird. The, the brazenness of it, the transparency of it. Like, so we're talking about Disney buying Fox and Stu Gatz's only question is, what does this do for me? Yeah. And, and so what, now that's what I wanted to get to. The secret sauce is not just the secret sauce of the show is not just Stu Gatz. The secret sauce of the show is that Stugatz is 44 bleeping years old, and we still look at him like the mischievous nine-year-old. I know you're bad. You know you're bad. It's okay that you're bad. We like you anyway. And Stugatz asked Thanks. me during the break, do you think I'll be able to pull it off at 70? The mischievous 10-year-old. I'm like, do you think I could keep it going for 26 more years? The mischievous 10-year-old who's deeply unlikable and yet somehow deeply likable. And it's a magic trick that he's pulled off 34 years longer than I thought anyone would be able to pull it off. And so he's asking me, do I have another run like that in me? <laughs> After this run is over at the right. age of 70, right. yes. Do I have another 10-year <laughs> run in me, maybe? Yeah. Can I stretch this thing like, out? Maybe till I'm 80. But how, I, I asked the question legitimately, though. How long does two gods get to be the mischievous 10-year-old? Because all he is is the mischievous 10-year-old around something. Around, <laughs> he's now sucking on the candy pops. Just go to commercial. Yummy. Don Lebertard. Is Stugat shady? I mean, that one's going to come back 100%. Yeah, um, I have. Thanks, Dan. Stugat. I just don't understand how you object to the idea that, like, it's kind of amazing. Like, I don't understand how you would even object to the idea of anybody in the world calling you shady. Listen, I know I'm shady. I know what I am. Okay, I'm more self-aware than you think. I am shady. I'm one of the shadiest people out there. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I wanted to ask you guys something because um, you guys are down generally on when I start talking about the violence of football, even though all I like to do around here really as it relates to some of this stuff is is humanize people, find connection points, and make you understand that the athlete's pain sometimes uh, is human. And when it comes to Ryan Shazier, we all kind of felt that one a little bit, right? Like watching that, there were, the reason that Monday night football game was so disturbing is because we saw him grabbing at his spine, and we don't know what is happening right now in the darkness with Ryan Shazier, but I kind of feel like we should see it. We should, we should see what's happening in the darkness with Ryan Shazier. We should see when Zach Miller is fighting for his leg in right. the hospital, yes. we should sort of be forced to see it so that it reaches us the way, the same way that Shazier reaches us when he's on the field grabbing in his back and everyone watching is disturbed and disgusted because they don't know if they just saw live on television a man get paralyzed. You want them to see what happens after that moment when we're all feeling the same thing. So what's, what's the reasoning for it? So people understand exactly how violent I, here, this sport here, is. I have read so that you have to understand that the athletes are human beings and that sure. they feel pain and what that pain, you have to find connection points with 
with your customers in terms of humanizing the people who are wearing helmets. You don't see many of their faces. Hell, I'm a sports expert, allegedly, loosely defined, and I don't know what Case Keenum's face looks like because these aren't human beings. They're uniforms and they're numbers, and maybe in their towns they get to be human beings because they know their personalities, but on television they're not human beings. They're pieces moving around the field. Now, Zach Miller, who almost lost a leg playing football, uh, he was very candid. He gave an interview after he went through everything and told you what was going on. No, but what I'm saying... You want want people to see... Now, there has to be an agreement on the other side of this from Zach Miller... Right. And Ryan Shazier. But you want people to see it while they're in. It. I, I think that it for the points of this argument, I'm not talking about a reality show, Stu Gods. for the points of this argument, when you guys are always yelling at me because I'm lamenting the violence of football. I think you would yell at me less if I made you look at some of these uncomfortable truths. If you, instead of reading those words by Zach Miller, Zach Miller's the one who made me think about it. When I started reading the words, did you read anything by Larry Johnson in the Larry Johnson in the Washington Post gave you an understanding of what it's like to live with CTE in a way that not even Junior Seau did, where he is telling you in real time, man, I'm always thinking about killing myself. I'm paranoid. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. And I don't recognize myself. And I know that's because of the damage football did. The thing that made me think about this entire conversation was reading about the Zach Miller de- details and being like, I had no idea. Mike, give us some of that information. Give us a good Jason Taylor story back there. Jason Taylor, we all reacted to the shock of Hall of Famer Jason Taylor telling some stories about things that he had to do with catheters. He's got like a wire running to his to his heart and it's in through his armpit and he's trying to conceal it. And getting all sorts of doctor approvals to end up playing. Like if you had, he's trying to fall asleep and he can't get to sleep at night and he almost loses his leg in the middle of the night. Like just let's listen to Jason Taylor in his own words. It's 11 o'clock at night and I'm trying to go to bed. Took a painkiller before I went to bed. Took a sleeping pill that I was prescribed for. I'm laying in bed and it's just bad. It's just hurting. I'm sweating. It it just, it's bad. So it's now two o'clock in the morning. I'm standing on the steps. And I'm, I'm realizing if I'm standing on the steps, it doesn't hurt at all. Like, it's, it feels fine. Well, I end up falling asleep standing on the steps because it would take the pain away. But then as soon as my, as soon as I would relax my leg, the pain would be, it would wake me up instantly. So it finally at 2.45 in the morning, I mean, I'm talking about tears and sweating and just, just crazy pain. I called the trainer, 2.45, he answered the phone and he, he knew when my phone call was coming that it was, that it had to be something. And he goes, JT, what's up? I said, dude, my leg. And he just said, oh, crap. He's like, all right, we got to go to the hospital. I was like, no, dude, I'm fine. I'm just asking, can I take another Viking in? He's like, no, we got to go. So anyway, we go to the hospital. They do a test. And I guess your blood pressure test down there is supposed to be in the 25 to 35 range. And I I could be off medically, but that's in that range for the the numbers. They do a test, and it comes back over 100. And everyone in the room's face kind of changes. And they said, no, it had to be a bad test kit. Let's get another one. So they do it again. They rig this thing up again. They do it again. And it's 120. So anyway, they say, well, we got to we have to do surgery. And I'm like, hold on. It's 3 in the morning. I got to call my wife. Like, Let me call my agent. What? And they're like, I said, I want to talk to Dr. Andrews. So they got Andrews on the phone. And he said, they gave him the results of the testing the day I did. And he said, yeah, you've got to get surgery. I said, okay, you're the best surgeon in the country. I'll, I'll see you in a couple of hours for surgery. And he said, okay, that's fine. You can fly down here right now. You'll be here in two hours to get surgery. But if you do that. When you get here, I'll have to cut your leg off. And I kind of like, yeah, right, whatever. And he goes, no, Jason, I'm dead serious. You need to get off the phone, lay down, and let them do the surgery right now, or you're going to lose your leg. It forces you to look at it. Yes. And that dude, one defensive player of the year, he needed epidural shots. He couldn't practice during the week, couldn't do anything. His back was in such bad shape that he fell while getting the epidural shots in the parking lot, curled up in the worst pain that he's known. And I just think if we had to hear it like that with a human voice on it, where you're like, he said that very matter-of-factly, and furthermore, went well out of his way to say, look, I'm not complaining about football. I chose this. This is not whining. This is not bitching. This is just me telling you what football is. He said it very matter-of-factly. Jason Taylor is one of those guys, and most of them give us the same answer. Yep, do it all over again. Uh, we'll do it all over again. So, And he wants to make sure that you understand that he's not disrespecting football. He does not mean to be complaining about anything. It's just matter-of-fact. And so... If we had to take a look at what Zach Miller was actually going through in real time, I do think it would reach us in many of the same ways that the Shazier thing did, 
gods. Two gods. Oh, I have no doubt. But what would, from there, once people, like, what happens? Are people going to stop watching no, it? you just turn you, it off? You, you, no, you have just. Have a better understanding of what them, it is they're you'd watching? You'd have more appreciation and understanding of what it is that you're watching. You'd have more understanding and appreciation of the warriors who do it for a living and the inhumane superhero lengths they have to do to do it that none of us would ever do with con- any kind of conviction. Um. Yeah, like I just think, I think if we understand, I think we have no idea. No matter how much we think we know, I, th- I think we have no idea of the number of things conspiring to make these people hurt like this. Right. I mean, we'll never, even if you had someone who is talking the way Jason Taylor just did and, and bringing you closer to it, you'd never really have a full understanding, but you'd be closer and you might have a better recognition for what it is these guys are doing and, and for the people themselves. Maybe we'll get some of that information uh, as we rank quarterbacks with someone who almost died on the field and lost his spleen next. Don't forget, you can hear more of my son's Dan and his two weekdays starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. Holiday cash. Here's where to get it. MyBookie.ag is the place to score serious cash on your sports predictions. There are a lot of football, basketball, and hockey games you can score big every day. Man up. Play like the pros. The money line, side, or total. MyBookie.ag is your hookup for all your betting with all the lines and super fast payouts. Join now and MyBookie.ag will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. Use promo code CHAMPION to activate the order. Don't leave the money on the table. MyBookie.ag promo code CHAMPION and your first deposit is matched up to 50%. Play with a pro's play because they get paid. MyBookie.ag Don Lebertard. How about this one here via text? This isn't some Mickey Mouse League. This is the National Football League, boy. There are no do-overs. Stugats. This is the National Football League, boy. <laughs> there are no that was do-overs. typed with chaw in his lower lip. Oh, no doubt. Yes. There are no do-overs. We just apologize. We're just wrong, and we move on. Boy. Boy. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We're very excited. Chris Sims is going to join us in just a minute to reveal his 61st best quarterback of the NFL. We are presented by Progressive Insurance, comparing rates to help you save. Now, that's Progressive. Call or click today and find out how much Progressive could save you. Chris Sims will join us in a second here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. Thursday night football tonight, Broncos at Colts, a doozy, 825 kickoff. Tigers trade Ian Kinsler to the Angels for prospects. And finally, British surgeon Simon Bromshaw admitted to a charge of assault after making his initials SB in the livers of two patients while they were unconscious during surgery. What are you doing? Assault. And I added an S to his name, and there was not an S. It's just Bram Hall. I made it Bromshaw. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in to Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, so Chris Sims is with us. We're pleased to have him with us. This is like new level stuff for me where I'm starting to recognize my own mistakes and point it out. Don't get too aware. We need you around All here. right, I will. We need you to be a 70-year-old, 10-year-old <laughs> mischievous child. So don't get don't get too aware. Okay. So here we are with Chris Sims. He's got a, a list of the top quarterbacks in the in the United States in the world, and it starts with Cody Kessler at seventy one. <laughs> Blake Bortles is number seventy. It's a suspicious list because now we get into Austin Davis at sixty nine, T J Yates at sixty eight, Cardale Jones sixty seven, Brandon Whedon, C J Beathard, Sean Mannion, Jake Ruddock, Cooper Rush, and now. For our 61st best quarterback uh, in the middle of a 70-day contract with Chris Sims. Thank you, Chris, for joining us again. Who is the 61st best quarterback in the world? Number 61 is Nathan Peterman, Buffalo Bills. Wow. wow. You've wow. got Peterman being better than Bortles. <laughs> wow. I yeah. I've, I've been looking Sorry. for the spots where, where Bortles would be insulted by any of this, and yeah. we just arrived at it. Yeah, man. I mean, I thought Peterman for sure would be lower than 70. <laughs> I can't believe these rankings seem flawed, but they are the the defend yourself. Defend yourself. So the, defend yourself <laughs> against a, a ranking that I believe is too, it is too high for Nathan Peterman. 
Well, I mean, this is the big thing. I mean, again, I do this for a living. I'm obsessed with it. I work at it. I watch it. You know I've been around quarterbacks my whole life. Now, you're ranking Blake Bortles higher in your own mind because he started and he had a year of 4,500 yards in his career, and people go, oh, but I'm just saying that if Nathan Peterman was afforded the same uh, luxuries of a Blake Bortles or played on that Jacksonville team, they would be a better team in general altogether. I mean, well put. Yeah. Well, it's a good argument, but basically the argument is just like Bortles is the starter. That's all I'm arguing. It's like, yes, well, I've seen him play, and he's been a starter, and he is function. And when I saw Peterman play, Peterman. So you understand. All right. So what? So what? What about it? With Nathan Peterman, what do you want to know? I mean, when we saw him play through five interceptions, I want I want to know what you saw that we didn't see. Yeah. What? Yeah. Did, yeah what? What have you seen in Nathan Peterman? Well, I mean, it's nothing special. I get that, but I'm not going to make my whole judgment about the guy's rest of his career. And oh, he gets the start in Week 12 in San Diego against Fair. the hottest team in football. Well argued. And yeah. Well, so that, to me, where I just go, okay, I'm not going to go up, but I just think the talent level, the ability to throw the ball naturally, uh, and, of course, you've heard me say this, Blake Bortles is a lefty. He throws it righty. Anybody you ever talk to would say he does just about everything in his life lefty. That's why I don't think he's a natural thrower. He's a good athlete. He looks great in front of the podium, and I know he's a nice human being. I'm just saying he wasn't put on earth to throw the football, and that's my biggest. Seventy argument. stands, Man. seventy stands. Uh, objection overruled. <laughs> he is arguing it well. I love how counterculture you are. I wonder what happened to your father, but thank you for yes. being as counterculture as you are. Yeah, but but <laughs> wait a second. So are you saying that Nathan Peterman was put on this earth to throw a football? Yes, I mean, more so than Blake Bortles. Okay, I'm more so than matter. Blake Bortles. More so than Blake Bortles. All right, we'll continue the argument tomorrow. Uh, Chris okay. Sims, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Be good. All right. Yeah, I'm down with that guy. I like I like him. He's great. <laughs> You're talking about Peterman, right? <laughs> I, I We didn't ask him any spleen questions. Wait a minute. I forgot to ask him about injuries and violence and all that stuff. Should I get him back on? Oh, he's gone? He's gone? He's He's gone? gone? He's actually gone this time? Oh, never mind. We'll ask him tomorrow. We'll ask him tomorrow. He's actually gone this time? Mike, we have 61 more days with him. Yeah. Yeah. You sure? I mean, it's up to Dan. I'm going to call him back. All right. Call him back. See, he was getting on a train. He was very busy today, but we'll go ahead and call him back. And if we get a bad reception... That's okay, because I do want to talk to him about, like, he told us the story. That was jarring to you, right, in keeping with the conversation that we were having when he told us about how he almost died on the field? Yes, jarring to me. How much blood had con- yes. accumulated in his stomach, how it felt like a 500-pound man was sitting on his chest. Yeah, here, it, listen. He I, passed out, almost passed out behind center. Dan, it's all jarring. It was jarring to see Ryan Shazier not be able to move his legs, all of it. And if you put me in the middle of it and I got to see what happened after they left the field and followed them throughout the next couple of weeks, I'd still tune in. I've seen gruesome things in right. that sport, and I'd still Chris, tune in on Sundays. Chris, we were talking about if people had to see what you dealt with with the spleen injury or what it is that Zach Miller had to deal with with almost losing his leg or Shazier right now in these dark moments – as he has surgery and wonders about his future, uh, right. if, if it would all be more humanizing. I'm wondering what is the most disturbing thing you ever saw. The spleen, I don't think you're going to be able to, to top your spleen story, but in terms of so, from someone else enduring something that you were like, man, that's not a normal pain threshold. That is That person's not normal, and what that person is experiencing right now is not exactly a tribute to our sport. No, I, I mean, the thing that I think of more than anything that's like the nastiest thing I can remember on a field is a practice at Texas. We had a, a running back on the field, and he tried, and it was a running back. It was, uh, I'm blanking on the name, so just forget about that. But regardless, somebody tried to tackle him, and he literally broke the guy's ankles to where it was across the field. He made a move on one of the defenders we had on the Texas defense, and his fibula and tibula broke, and I could hear it from 40 yards away. And that's when I knew, oh, my gosh, that was just one time where I could talk about it and go, that was disgusting and troubling to my brain, and it was hard to move on for the rest of the day with practice. Yeah, but you guys always do. And yep. so and so, how, we always do. But what is your mindset when you're in the hospital with the spleen stuff, and they're, they, they, and they're saying to you, hey, you almost died on the field. Like, you could have died on the field. Like, are you saying, yeah, it was worth it? 
You, you know what? I mean, I'm a little crazy, but yes, I was. And it, you know what's even worse, Dan, is at the end of that year, I wanted to come back. I went to the doctor in the end of December and said, you know, I think I feel pretty good. I think I might be able to play the last two or three games of the year. And Of course, we weren't a good team, and he was trying to explain to me how bad the injury was. But regardless, yes, I wanted to come back and play. It was just the price of doing business. That's the first thing I ever told you, Dan. I never thought Ray Lewis running to me full speed uh, at 250 pounds was good for my health, and I knew there was risks in the job. Excellent. All right, Chris, we'll talk to you. Thank you, sir. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, guys. Be good. See you. Um, that's the thing. That's the that's the uncomfortable transaction. So many of these guys are good with uh, being warriors and being a little uh, tougher and better and stronger than we are about these physical things. Um, they take great pride in it, and you you can't scrub it out of them when you start talking. But but you realize you realize that the, that same mentality right now is at war with its own league, right? Because. The league is trying to make everything a little bit safer, and a lot of guys are like, does it really have to be? Like, that's not what I signed up for. Sure. I signed up for the Sims deal, that I know this is dangerous, and I know that uh, Ray Lewis hitting me is going to be unhealthy. The other thing, Dan, those guys just want to be out there, whether it's for themselves, the teammates, whatever it is, they want to be out there. Like, I was listening to uh, Golick and Wingo, and they were talking to John Gruden earlier this week, and the Buccaneers had the one seat. They had everything locked up. There was no reason to play the final two games. And Gruden, because Derek Brooks' body was broken, all right, from a long season, went to Derek Brooks on the plane ride home from a game, and he said to him, hey, let's take the next couple of weeks off, get you ready for the playoffs, your body's broken, you look like you're in pain. And he said that Derek Brooks, just at the mere suggestion that he would take a couple of games off, looked back at him like he wanted to punch him in the face. Like, are you crazy? I'm not missing a snap of a game. It, there is something, there is an addiction about it. It is an addiction. Uh, that glad, The Gladiator Sundays, to God, so I've told you about this before. Like, we've talked about how the original Gladiators used to be prisoners and they used to be slaves and they used to people, be people who didn't have freedom. And then there was so much glory in it that people started volunteering for it. Like, right. that's what football is mike uh, bob einstein called you directly what's going on back yeah, there yeah i'm actually on the phone with bob right bob now. i want to talk to you bob bob i want to bob we want to talk to you on air would you please come on air bob uh, did you hear that bob he can't hear me yelling He's, he said he said no he didn't hear it you want to yell a little louder um yes i think you you probably yes bob it's levitard we're on the air but you're not on the air i know you think the show is cursed the show is not cursed. There are many people who have been on the show who have not died. We want you on the show. I am shouting. You are not on the show right now. You're just on a phone. I don't want to scare you, but I would like for you to be on the show. Would you please join us next segment? Did you hear that, Bob? He says, uh, I, I, I love you, Dan. Give me Allison's phone number right now. Oh, God. <laughs> this guy. He All called right. here for Allison? Funkhauser yeah, he called for Allison. He can't find Allison. Jeez. Listen to me and listen good. If you don't go... <laughs> if you, Flash! <laughs> if, you go, if you go out this weekend, that's Funkhauser from Curb Your Enthusiasm, Super Dave Osborne, Bob Einstein, the brother of Albert Brooks, is calling the show, looking for Allison, and refusing to come on the show because... He thinks we're cursed because he says that Alan Thicke and Bill Paxton died, and Adam West died because they were on with us. Glad yeah. we cleaned all that up. Dollar Shave Club, speaking of cleaning up, clean up your face. Dollar Shave Club, why are you laughing, Mike? What are you laughing about? He said, tell Levitard I wish I could do his show, but I'm feeling great. <laughs> Don Levitard. Never going to stop. I am what I am, man. I'm 44 years old. I ain't changing. Stugats. Why well, change now? It's worked. Here I am. Sitting next to you, filthy rich. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So during the local hour, I don't know how you guys edited this or what you guys did with it. For many years, we've had the president of the Marlins on to review movies with us and talk about a bunch of different things. He's a bit of a loose cannon. Uh, he's he's fun and crazy and unpopular, and he, and we got into an argument. We got into a brawl. Uh, the first hour of the show here because I'm more than a little bit annoyed about what has happened in this 
conspiring between baseball and Derek Jeter to make sure that Miami lost Giancarlo Stanton. By giving Jeter the team, by accepting his business plan, you knew that the move. He explained to you, Rob Manfred, that the move was going to have to be, I got to cut payroll and strip it down. And you signed off on that again on South Florida. Again. And so I want to talk to Rob Manfred about that and ask him difficult questions. But we had the former president of the Marlins, David Sampson, on. And I think for you nationally, you need to hear some of this because we went at it pretty good. And I like the man and I respect the man. And he is a good businessman. I don't mind people who are unpopular. I like a lot of people who are unpopular. But he is involved in this, too, because he's a little too good at business. Right. And um, and everything that baseball done has done here has felt wrong using South Florida. But what I wanted to ask you is, how do we explain this interview? For those who didn't hear it in the local hour, how how would you explain it through your viewpoint? Um, I mean, you have the former Marlins president who was right in the middle of the sale. He was negotiating the deal to sell it to Derek Jeter and his group. Um, and he still has a place with the organization. He's still paid by the organization. He's, still paid. He's the one that Jeter, Jeter fired him. Right. Let him keep his salary and then had him go fire all the people who were hard to fire. Luminary. Yeah. So I think that it was, listen, it was a contentious. Luminaries. Luminaries. I'm sorry about that. It was a contentious uh, interview. And David Sampson, I thought, made some pretty decent points. Okay. And use facts to support some of the points that he made. And I feel like you made some pretty good uh, points on behalf of the city of Miami and the people of Miami. So it's contentious, it's entertaining, uh, and at times a little bit funny, to be honest with Is you. Because well, David Sampson uh, makes me laugh. Was it funny or was it, was it, uh, well, okay, was it funny? Guillermo, you're a Marlins fan. Was that interview funny? It's tough because he's, ni- he's a nice guy personally. Right. Like, I've met him, I like him. Um, but, yeah, he's he's part of the reason that this happened. So it's hard to, like... You can like him and not like what he does. Also, by the way, for those who don't know, his main job for a while was to get the stadium done. So he's not a popular figure down here just because they're not happy with the stadium deal that he got done. No, he got he's too good at business. He fleeced the city of Miami and then he fleeced Jeter. Like that's what happened here. There are people nationally who are going to say, now locally, they know him a little bit better, right? They don't trust him. They might not like him, but they do know him. Nationally, people are going to say, well, hey, if he's still earning a paycheck from Derek Jeter, what is he going to say? Well, no, there and you I'm go. I'm telling you, yes. he's going to say stuff. Yes, he right. said last last week with us, he said, I, Jeter must have a plan. I don't know what it is, but it, there must be a plan. He will say stuff. This is not the normal. I think a lot of people are going to be introduced right now to the former president of the Marlins, and they're going to be surprised by the way that he talks. He was also, he's, it's kind of complicated, former stepson of the owner, Jeffrey Loria. He was also the first person voted off a of survivor one season. Yes. I think he is still the stepson of Jeffrey Loria, isn't he? Or is it, do you become a former, do former. You become, do you become a former stepson if they get divorced? Do you become a former stepson? I used to have stepbrothers. I don't have stepbrothers anymore. Really? Yeah. I did wow. not know that. I, wait a minute. Do you talk to them? Guillermo yeah, put yeah. it, Guillermo put it on the poll. Yeah. I thought all your only child stuff was always because you didn't have to share with others. You had stepbrothers? I actually have a half sister. You lose step siblings in a divorce? Yeah, I, I, I had my step brothers. Wait, so what do you like when they were your step brothers? Would you call them bro? Like, what would you? I'm wondering. There's a, there's a specific they were, they were, reason I'm asking. They were my step brothers for about five years. Yeah, I'm gonna put it. Do you stop being put it on the poll at Levitar Show? Do you stop being step brothers or step sisters if the parents divorce? It's a little different because I got stepbrothers and a stepsister when I was 21 years old. It was kind of new to me. But all right, so we don't we'll get into this more, the very important topic of the day. I think if you remain close and you still talk, then you're still stepbrothers. No, you don't get Wait a minute. So you get the, that that just means you're still in a close relationship no, no, or not. Love, no. no. Let me ask you a I'm question. Right. My, my brothers dad, for life, man. My dad's ex-wife. Is she still my stepmother? No, but she's his ex-wife. She becomes his ex-wife, so, so he, she's your my, ex-stepmother. So these so, are your ex-stepbrothers. Step but they're not nothing, uh, right? I mean, wait, if they don't qualify as stepbrothers, they might as well be nothing. Like that, stepbrothers is like the it's the lowest form of family bond, is it not? Put I'm that at- on the poll as well. <laughs> is stepbrothers the lowest form of family bond? Imagine how confusing this was for Lori and Samson. <laughs> yeah, it must right, have been. Yeah. Uh, so, David Samson, you're going to want to hear this. You're going to want to hear this. It's good radio next.
Don Lebatard. You are the best, and when I say the best, I mean the very worst and most evil. Stugats. The worst. But this time, the it's for real. worst. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. David Sampson, former Marlins team president. This area is going crazy again. And a texter writes in here, Stugatz, why keep having this bleeping guy on who is still on the Marlins payroll? He's not going to say anything and is a company man. We got a lot of newcomers around here, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's not going to say anything and is a company man. Sampson last week said stuff that ended up just. He's been on here for so long because he's not a company yeah, man, I mean, and he, he does say stuff. He is not a company man. Yes, Trust, yes. he is not a company man. David, we'll get to the Marlins. I will take a lot of criticisms. Right. Believe me, I will. I will not take the criticism that I'm not going to say anything. All right, through the history of movies, give us the movie that would best represent what's going on with the Marlins right now. <laughs> that's a good question. Is that, 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 say, makes him, that makes him, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Good. It is a good question. Eight men out. Uh, that was fraud. Um, eight men out. Okay. All right. Um, well, here's that's about a triple entendre, and that's pretty quick to come up with, given that you didn't prep me with that question. Yes, too, and that's, that's a good one. Uh, that's a good well, job I want to ask you some questions now about the Marlins. Can you explain to me, starting for here first? Why would someone buy a $1.1 billion or $1.2 billion team if they can't afford it and it's losing money? Well, I think that, that that's, a, that's a two-part question. Uh, there are only 30 teams, so the team is worth what someone will pay for it. So this team is worth $1.2 billion because that's what that group paid for it. The fact is the team was losing money all the years. Despite dead spin be damned, the team lost a lot of money. And everyone came into the deal eyes wide open. What the plan was, trading Stanton, not trading Stanton, I'm not going to disagree that a potential rebuild was necessary, given the fact that we couldn't win for all those years. The only question that new owners always ask themselves is, do you want to come in and start a rebuild now, or do you want to wait? And I totally respect whatever decision they're going to make, and that's not me being a company man, because there's some argument to be made that a rebuild certainly is necessary because, it, as, as Derek said correctly, we weren't winning. And as Mike Hill yeah. tells me, we're not breaking up the 27 Yankees. Yes, and that's all fine. I don't understand why Mike Hill still works there, but that's all fine. They're not breaking up the 27 Yankees because he didn't build the 27 Yankees, and neither did you. Um, and you spent a lot of money on Edison Volquez and a bunch of other people who Terrible. don't. Who, yeah, Terrible. Well, but this is what I want to ask you. The part that offended me about Stanton is they gave away something of value as if it didn't have value. And what I want to ask you is, David Sampson, former president of the Marlins, did they get enough for Stanton? My answer is yes, because of the relief, and that matters. And it, what you do with the relief is what matters. Whether the prospects turn into players, the fact is it gives them a chance. And I want to talk about the debt because there's a lot of misunderstanding. The team did not have uh, $400 million in debt when it was sold. So it's a complicated thing, these businesses. So debt is not the reason why trades are happening. The reason why trades are happening, in my opinion, as an outsider, because I am an outsider, is because they believe it's the best way to build a sustainable team long term, which we tried and couldn't do. We ended up in the middle way too much. Jerry Reinsdorf told me in 1999, whatever you do, don't be in the middle. And that was 18 seasons ago. And we ended up in the middle way, way too often. David, going back to the, the Stanton trade, you said it was good because of the relief it allowed the team, but it seems like the only one that's benefiting from that is the ownership. They just don't have to pay. They're not reinvesting that money in the team, making it better. They're just keeping the money that they would spend on that salary. So how is that benefiting the team other than the ownership? No, because I think what they do is you take, you take money and you reinvest it when it makes sense. I think the Marlins will be ready to pounce. When oh, but oh, but David, I, why, why would we trust these people with that? Like, why? Like, I don't, I don't. Uh, David, David, chance, David, Dan, David, David. When the you stadium don't trust was me, Dan, because I because I burned you, right? That's why you don't trust me. You have to trust this new administration because they haven't burned anyone yet. Do I think that things could have gone differently? Uh, sure, in terms of communication or PR strategy, but that's not being rude or mean. That's just seeing what I'm seeing being written by you guys. But the fact is. Trust that there's a plan and a process and a thought, 
and believe in it. No, and maybe, no, maybe no, 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 through. David, no. no, no. They built your ballpark. That was the last chance. No is the answer. They deserve to not no, have a customer they next year. haven't had a chance, Dan. Give no. them a chance. No, no, wait, no, wait, no, no. Why? Baseball has had a chance. Baseball has had a chance because baseball What's forced. the benefit of being so grumpy, though? D- David, why is that helpful? Da- David, you? David, it's not grumpiness. The MVP of the league just got traded, and we were told that was going to not ever happen again because you already did it once with Cabrera once you got your ballpark. You got your ballpark, and then it happened again. And no. No, You're nobody wrong. here is going to... Dan, hold on, Dan. I will let you absolutely crucify me, but only with facts. Cabrera was not traded after we got a ballpark deal. He was traded before we got a ballpark deal because we didn't have a ballpark deal. And right. we were you told that would never day. happen again right, but if you Blue got Jays, your ballpark. The Blue Jays trade happened right that. after, and that's what made me stop being a fan of baseball because the Blue Jays deal, even though in long term you guys probably won that deal, the sign that it, it signaled to the fans was business as usual. Dave, you can't keep doing that and then have new owners or new people expect a different result. You just can't. It's happened too many times in this market by too many people. It's been three owners, and I get it, but now we're up to the fourth owner, and let's hope that it's different. No, what uh, other choice do we have? No, a man or a woman a cheats. member of our community. No, a man, what other choice do you have? A man or a woman cheats on his relationship one time, maybe you forgive it. Two, three times, no. No, you're going to be scarred forever on what your relationship is with future people. Yeah, I think that's a horrible way to live, and I think that that interrupts your relationships with people. Because I, I know. you basically no. brought the baby with the bathwater. Yes, but and they, maybe that's why you're so grumpy and upset all the time. I, well, because it is offensive. What happened here was offensive to people I care about. The taxpayers paid for that stadium, and that's how it ended up with the MVP yeah. of the league traded in his prime. And you guys are telling the me tourists paid for the stadium. The tourists and Jeffrey, uh, not our the our broke ass city, paid for that stadium. David, it's a tourist tax that can only go to ballparks. Are we seriously? Still having a debate. If there were no Marlins Park, there'd be no Marlins in Miami. Would that be better? I, I at this point, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I'm asking. Today. No, at this I, point, yeah, maybe. Be better, this, Dave. Dave, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Dave. With the stadium, the stadium was made here with the idea of we're going to make this town major league. How's it feel today, David? Does it does it, do the Marlins feel major league to you? Being in the major leagues doesn't make you major league. They are minor league team in the majors that continues to treat South Florida like a brothel, and they just did it with the MVP of the league telling us that that guy doesn't have value. Metaphors, a brothel? Come on! I mean, I love brothels, but you're mixing metaphors. Um, South Florida got screwed on this one, Dave. They Isn't shouldn't. there a chance that the team wins more than 77 games this year? No, Dave. You guys have been making that argument for 10 years while never winning over it's, 77 games. It's like, not great. I'm trying to put a positive spin on it because I'm a member of the community like you are now. I'm not a member of the Marlins. I'm part of the community, and I want to have a belief, and I don't want to live my life being disappointed all the time, so I'm going to try to look at the bright side. Dave, you guys can look at the bright side because you got all the money. Like, it's easy to look at the bright side. I own as much of the team as you do. No, but what I'm saying is when you guys, when everyone makes that much money in the transaction after running their business poorly, it's very easy for you from over there to look at the bright side. While the people who are complaining and yelling are not looking at the bright side because they're not the ones who got the money. I guarantee you that if I give those fans any portion of the money that Loria made on this transaction, they'd shut up with their complaining. <laughs> should we just drop, like, money over, t- over the yes, town with that yes, healthy yes, economy? Yes, yes, you should yes, do that. Yes, 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 yep. yes. I think that if you did the parade you were talking about, you could drop, <laughs> instead of confetti, drop dollar bill. The parade got right. neutered because Jeter's trying to clean up your boss's mess. Because this guy's worse. I don't know. And if he's trying to clean up an existing mess that he inherited, why is he getting blamed? Uh, well, I'm blaming baseball. I'm blaming baseball for gifting Jeter the team, and then I blame you for fleecing Jeter. That's what I do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You fleece Jeter, and I I believe that that franchise sold for about $300 million more than it should have. So do you. When you go into a store and buy a piece of art, uh, there's this artist in Miami who I loved at Art Basel. His name is um, Lebo or something. Oh. When someone goes in and buys a Lebo for fifty grand, except it's really probably worth ten grand. did the person get fleeced? Uh, yeah. No, that's not how it works. Things are worth what someone will pay for it. 
in every part of right. the economy. Right, no, no, and usually that's oh, a... Oh, David, trans- you're no. acting like things don't affect the sale of well, anything. Well, that's that, ridiculous. Well, but wait a minute, that's a transaction between two people, but if the end result of that is that transaction, that art that I paid $50,000 for was only worth $10,000, and then I take the remaining $40,000 of difference and I throw it to the New York Yankees and give them part of it and tell them, take all of this, and here, you can have it, and here, give me back something from your garbage can. I'll take that and put it in my living room as art, then yes, I'm going to be a little bit offended. I mean, and I, I think that you've brought it as far as you can bring it. I just don't think anything, and no one gets fleeced when there's a transaction. David, the part that you're missing is that baseball wanted Jeter and the other guy had more money. The other guy didn't have to take loans out in order to be able to afford any of this stuff. The other guy didn't have to bring I'm in all sorts of failed partners. I shouldn't talk about, but you're 100% wrong. Every single owner who was bidding for the team, potential owner, all of the bidders were in the same exact spot with the same level of debt. And that is how things are bought. It's like saying that someone who buys a house for, a, for 200 grand and takes out a mortgage for 50 of it is not worthy of owning that house because someone could have bought the house for straight cash. It's just not true. We'll talk to you uh, soon. My Lord. Yeah. This was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> for the attack, man. You enjoyed it, huh? Good to be back. See you later. <laughs> I can't wait to be back next week. <laughs> See you later. See about next week. <laughs> See you later. Bye, guys. <laughs> Catch more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern, on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. Hey, girl, have you done something new with your scales? Using new moisturizer? Nice. It really brings out the hazel in your eyes. Oh, hold on. Are you using whitening strips, too? Your fangs look good, girl. Really good. A really charming snake charmer? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. Wait, what? Have you been doing Pilates, too? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Lebatard. A standing ovation for Meryl Streep. Hey, come on. She's been nominated 20 times, and she's won three. She's a 150 career hitter. Very bad per. Streep. Stugatz. Uh, 150, Dan. I get you back, you know, sent back to the minors you know, within a week. She's right. Buddy Bianca Lana. Uh, my sense is you agree with me on this. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. All of Hollywood is burning, but this guy stands regally, uncommonly fit for his age or any age. (laughs) J.K. Simmons with us on ESPN Radio. Enjoy having him on. Uh, Father Figures opens Friday. You've heard us talk to Owen Wilson this week uh, and that other guy, Ed Helms. Uh, that other guy you worked with, Ed Helms. Is J.K. Simmons with us? Thank you for being on with us, J.K. I'm curious... On on this film, working with these guys was um, was anything unique about the experience? No, it was just another day at the office. Pretty much, it was uh, Owen Wilson and that other guy, and then um, a bicep then I curl. Was that other other guy, and uh, you know, we just goofed around and had fun. Right, and uh, I'm just curious on which set is it that uh, J.K. Simmons has had the most fun. In the history, wherever it is, wherever it is that he's been working, the happiest, most fun of J.K. Simmons' work life has been? You know what? The most, I mean, I, we had a lot of fun, and we cracked each other up a lot on Father Figures. The most fun and just, like, ridiculous laughter I ever had on the set was a, a little supporting part I did in a movie called I Love You, Man. Really? Paul Rudd and Jason Segel. Yes, and, uh, those guys are yeah, funny. The, those guys are funny. And so what was it? Was much of it improv or what was it? Or was it just laughing offset? Was it laughing on camera? No, it was, oh, it was, it was cracking up on camera. Uh, poor John Hamburg, the writer director was like, he was just constantly like, guys, guys, can we just get one in the can, please? Really? That Stop has laughing to... <laughs> at each other. Let the audience do that. Um, do you know how many awards you won for Whiplash? I do. Do you? I do. Do not. Okay, it's 47 of them. If you had to, like, if I forced you right now, if I abducted someone that you care about, and it was like, you got to find all 47 of them. How many are you finding? A dozen. No. And where are they? <laughs> A dozen. <laughs> um, uh, some of them are, are, you know, scattered around the house, prominently displayed. My favorite, actually, is the BAFTA Award, which is sort of the 
the British equivalent of the uh, Academy Award, and uh, it's a mask, like a like a Greek, you know, comedy tragedy mask. And that's sitting on a on a shelf downstairs with the the Greek masks that our kids made in sixth grade as part of their Greek studies project. <laughs> nice. And so, is that uh, the proudest award that you won for Whiplash, or is that the proudest thing in your house in terms of memorabilia like that? Uh, that's just that's just the one that sort of fits the theme the best. I want to talk. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. No. Um. Never mind. Go ahead. I just wanted to talk to you about your career as a, uh, a door-to-door uh, singer. Like, a, It's really all I want to talk about, to right? be honest like, with you. Okay, yes. so if you're not familiar with J.K. Simmons, you are familiar with J.K. Simmons, is the point. Like, if I put him in front of you, you'd know exactly what I was talking about. But maybe you don't know him by name. You should. But put that in front of him, Stu God, to ask him the question. Well, I just, it, it's interesting. I want you to take us through this because you were living in Seattle at the time and you were providing singing telegrams in a tutu. And I would like you to maybe walk us through one of those Please. and perhaps, you know, give us a little singing telegram oh, to the show. Oh, that would be great if you remember any of them. Tremendous. Yeah, um, that, that was not me. That's uh, that's a really horrible rumor that's been floating around. And, <laughs> it and was, I think somebody photoshopped it. was in Seattle after college. Like me. In Seattle We're after in college. Tutu. Company provided yes, singing telegrams. Yes, yes, I did two two grams. <laughs> it was a dark period in my show business career. <laughs> two two grams. <laughs> two two grams. Can I get one? Right, love to buy one right now. What would they cost? What would it cost right uh, now? <laughs> right now, they would cost uh, half a million dollars. <laughs> and I would come to your house with some balloons and a two two. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when were the discount yeah, so. days? What would that have cost me in the discount days of getting J.K. Simmons in a two-two gram? I think I made ten bucks. <laughs> I might have made twenty for two-two gram. <laughs> so I'm guessing they probably wanted you know fifty bucks a throw. How how is your singing? Uh, well, actually, oddly, embarrassingly, uh, uh, I was a trained singer. I was singing like you know opera and you know art <laughs> songs and Brahms and Beethoven before that but for the two two grams they wanted like like incredibly macho looking dudes such as myself right. uh, with <laughs> facial hair preferably wait 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 so they wait wait wait, wait 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 so they cast you for this the same way they did for Oz oh absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> but we had to sing in falsetto was was the the final like ultimate embarrassment so yeah we'd go sing you know happy birthday or you know whatever try and embarrass the people at their at their place of work but what we mostly did was embarrass ourselves do you remember one that you did like because people can request messages that you well, would have happy to sing. birthday he remembers yes. happy birthday but do you remember anyone that was particularly shameful well i mean i, I actually die of repressed all those Specific memories. Understood. I, yeah, I do remember that. Oftentimes, I would show up with my balloons and my, you know, oh so clever little ditty that somebody wanted me to sing, and just completely lay an egg. Like thirty people standing around an office, staring at me, just waiting for it to be over so they could go back to work. <laughs> and you're standing there in a tutu. So what? Oh, what? like that for ten dollars. <laughs> But, so what is the place, uh, on the other end of the extreme, the only reason I don't actually say all of that or ask you about that to shame you, I like to show people in our audience sort of how people, the journey, how great the journey can be. So from that point to where it is you've arrived now, what would you say was the most extreme example on the other side of that? We were talking earlier, George Clooney got 14 of his friends in a room and just gave them a million dollars cash and took care of the taxes because they took care of him his entire life. What other place on the other extreme of that do you have from the far reaches of, you know, balloon tutu gram land? Well, I, I gather my closest, to, this was just a couple of weeks ago, and I don't like to, you know, only because it's you guys while I talk about this. I gathered my 15 <laughs> oldest friends and gave them a million dollars each for, uh, <laughs> for, for being there for me through the years because I heard about that Clooney deal. <laughs> 
You won up them, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fifty. You had more friends and uh, and more money. More friends and more money. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> well done. That's, uh, that's, yeah. that's really nice. Take care of the you. taxes, I'm assuming, right? Um, and while oh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. And while yeah. it's funny, it's not really an answer to my question. <laughs> Have you found a place where you've been pinching yourself because you're like, I can't believe I arrived here. I can't believe they pay me to do this. I can't believe they pay oh, me this I, much. I, there, are, there are dozens of those. Uh, the first one that springs to mind was was when I was in the uh, when I was cast. Uh, to be in the original cast, like you get your name in the Samuel French original edition of a Neil Simon play on Broadway, and I and I, I was just uh, you know I got that phone call in in my uh, crappy little sublet in Hell's Kitchen, and uh, and I was just uh, you know jumping up and down giddy like a high school cheerleader. Have you ever felt a shame? in the movies that feels anything like being in a tutu singing to a room full of people who want you out of the room? Like, has there been anything in your acting career that has felt like that? I'm not going to give you any titles, but, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A couple, two, three, four times, yeah. Have, okay, but have you, has J.K. Simmons ever done it strictly for the money, knowing that he was headed toward that? Like, because you don't strike me as the type, not and certainly not at this point in your career. Like you seem to be about the art, the challenge, and that the that the role be a little different each time, so that the experience would be different each time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, you know, I can I can honestly say I, I I haven't just taken a job that I thought was going to be awful just for the money, and I I, I learned that back when I was, you know, making one hundred and seventy five dollars a week doing regional theater that. There was one time when my agent talked me into going out of town to do a play that I had no desire to do, and I spent, you know, eight weeks in Cleveland, first of all, um, just, you know, just being miserable because, you know, I was doing something that I wasn't into, and I was, I thought, you know what, I'd rather be back in New York waiting tables and, uh, and uh, waiting for something more interesting to come along. Again, Father Figures opens on Friday. We talked to Ed Helms about it. We've talked to Owen Wilson, and now we're talking to J.K. Simmons about it. J.K., what's the best script you've ever read? It's a tie. It's uh, it's Whiplash and Juno. Really? I read one. I read. I, I heard that there was one that you read that you were so badly wanted to be a part of the cast that you would have done anything to be a part of the cast, and it didn't matter what they were paying you. Was that Juno? Um, oh, that well, that was that was both of those and 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 a few others I can think of. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything I've done with Jason Reitman. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, I'm uh, by and large, I'm 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 all about what's on the page. And you know, if it's not uh, if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage, as we used to say back when I was on the stage. Uh, we enjoy talking to you, sir. Thank you for being a part of our lives. It is my absolute pleasure. All right. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Awkward transition. Time for some ads. I'm going to start ending all of that, every interview that way. Thank you for being a part of our lives. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, getting closer to the week. And I what? What's wrong with the articulation of that kind of gratitude? No, I'm, I, I'm not sure how we process it on the other end, but that is very flattering. Yeah. He's, he's talented, he's fun, he's got a sense of humor about himself. Thank you for bringing that energy into our world. Thank you. <laughs> so you can do it with everyone. I, I'm, I'm, remind me. Okay. Don Lebatard. They bit a rat since 1896. Oh, oh, get out your wallet. That's why I was getting the money Ooh. ready. Stugatz. I don't think Stugatz should be fined for that. Great, money back in the pocket. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Tweeter writes in here, you are really overestimating the amount the national audience cares about this Marlin story. No one gives a bleep. So this is the straight talk. I don't give a bleep what the national audience wants on this Marlin story. What I want is the commissioner of baseball to come on here and answer some questions, and we're going to pound on this platform until the commissioner of baseball answers some questions. And... Many of you are writing in, Lebetard, you do not have the power to make the commissioner of baseball answer some questions. And you are absolutely right about that. But my company does. My company does. 
My company's in a partnership with this man, and this man needs to go on what's not a safe space for him on this network and ask answer some difficult questions. Because what they just did to South Florida is wrong, and he'd admit it. He'd admit it in an honest moment, because he knows that what was done to South Florida here was wrong. Good for baseball, good for New York, good for him. Not good for South Florida, and he can't defend it. So I'm going to try and get him on here to try to defend it. And I'm telling, I'm here to tell you that I doubt he comes on because he can't defend it. Not because he's scared of me, because it can't be defended. So we'll see. We'll see if it happens or not. Because I don't have the power to get this guy on here to answer some questions. But you better damn sure believe this company does. And so we'll see. We'll see if I can get him to answer some questions here. I don't think it's an unfair request. I mean, talk to the market. This market feels really, really bad about what just happened to them for the second or third time now. Since fourth 19, time. Fourth time. I'm sorry, since 1997. All right, come on and answer some, some tough this questions. Was, it's one thing for it to happen three times. It wasn't supposed to happen after you got your tax dollars. It was never supposed to happen again. Bud Selig knows that. But this is a new commissioner who hasn't... Like, what tough questions has this guy gotten about anything? Manfred, come here and do your job, please. Like, you got a customer base down here that is agitated with good reason. Has every reason to be. And you don't deserve... For this franchise, this business down here that you got up to $1.2 billion by putting your buddy Jeter in charge of this thing and making sure that Jeter stayed in baseball and what was good for baseball wasn't good for South Florida and Jeter doesn't have the money to do anything. Jeter incurred this jet. Jeter's solution is trade the MVP in a yard sale. Don't get value for him and don't even take two or three months of his contract to see if you can increase the leverage and do what's best for South Florida or do what's best for the organization. Just cut money. That plan was delivered to you, Manfred. You okayed all of this. And so I would like to talk to you about it and ask you questions, not yell at you, civilly ask you questions that are difficult to answer. Yeah, and we're not off to a great start there. Right. I mean, the tone's a problem and... I'm not going to fine you for it. No, I deserve to agree with you. No, 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 I deserve to be fined for my tone. My tone is terrible. You're defending the city that you love. Here's the problem. My tone is terrible against everyone, though, is what I'm telling you. I'll take whatever consequences there are to doing. I understand. I understand who I'm coming after here. Right. But here's the problem. The celebration in New York, a much bigger market, and the market that he cares about, Rob Manfred, cares about much more than the market of Miami The celebration up there is drowning out all the stuff down here. So I want him to understand it. I want him and baseball and all of you to understand what happened here and be clear on it. The problem was Manfred and the other owners, one approving this new ownership group down here, they heard this plan and they, I'm not even sure they considered it. They probably, I think what's most egregious is maybe nobody saw what the problem was And that they were just repeating history again to a market that really can't take repeating history. Man, I'm telling you, what baseball has done to South Florida, I've said this for the last couple of days, and this is why I think, even though we can be a clown show a lot of the time, I think that the point of journalism a lot of the time is to hold the powerful accountable. It's the career path I chose. And so I'm agitated. It sounds like I'm furious. I'm just very passionate about this. And so... If not using the power of ESPN and this platform to question Manfred about my town getting bleeped up and down on something, then when? Then when use the power? And so, like, I, this guy needs to come on and answer some questions. And it's not like the commissioners for a long time have felt real safe on Mike and Mike. They felt real safe there. It's a safe place for them to go. And I get it. That's Corporate America is buying up that show, and that show is great, and that show was a pioneer for a long time. But, Commissioner, come on here and answer some difficult questions, some things that are really hard to defend, some things that I don't think you can defend. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. And put some trampoline warning tracks in the outfield. Yeah! Yeah! 
Don Lebatard. See how quick he is at slithering around I'm things? Good. Like, yeah, you are good. You're, you yeah. are a master liar. Stugatz. Like, you are you are a genius liar. You are like uh, the Einstein of liars. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. We got a new celebrity proct- <laughs> prognosticator next. Guillermo, what are you laughing at? We should put my father on the air, right? We, we should, should not put him on the air right now. We should put my father on right the air. Right now, no. Not yeah. the way he is yeah. right bring now. Him over to the, bring him over to the microphone. I want to talk to my father before we talk to our celebrity prognosticator i will tell him to watch his language i will tell him i was eating lunch i had my back turned to anyone to everyone and he just walked past me and he would not take another step until i turned around and when i finally turned around he just scorched Derek. yeah okay and we got to watch the language here poppy we got to be careful with the language please my father's still coming in here Uh-oh. screaming. Uh, he's just be careful, Poppy. All right, let's do this first so Poppy can gather himself. ESPN yes. Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. We're going to have a brand new celebrity prognosticator in just a minute. I mean, Carrot Top is out. He lost last week to Colin Cowherd. And that new celebrity prognosticator will join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. Here's your Sports Center update Manchester City defeated. Swansea, 4 to nothing for their Premier League record 15th straight victory. Hope I said that right. I have no idea. Adrian Peterson may not return to the Cardinals this season, according to head coach Bruce Arians. And finally, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was once again asked about running for president, this time on The Ellen Show. Johnson's response to Ellen was, I'm seriously considering it, yes, For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, celebrity prognosticator, we are still uh, kind of ahead. I got to do the percentages here. We're basically even with Colin Cowherd, and we're bringing in a big gun here. We like to prove that it doesn't matter whether the predictors know about football or whether they're smoking marijuana. They will do better than Colin Cowherd. So far this season, we're basically even with him, and we're bringing in our big gun to finish him. Like, we're bringing in Big Boy from Outcast to just be done with Colin Cowherd, to just end him for the season. But before we do that, real quick, Bobby, and I don't have a lot of time for this, uh, please control your temper and don't say any bad words, Bobby, because I'm afraid of putting you on live radio and television, okay? Please just... Your thoughts on what is happening right now with the Marlins in like 15 quick seconds here where you don't get anybody in any trouble, okay? Jira should leave town. Yeah. Okay. We don't need him here. Yeah. Okay. He shouldn't show up at Heat games, Marlins game. Yeah, Dolphins. He shouldn't show up at Dolphins game. He's a, a persona non grata here okay, in South Florida. Persona non grata yes. is okay. It's much yes. better than what That's you were right. saying before. Yes. All right, get him out of here Way now. All right, up, w- whisk, whisk my father away. Persona non grata is much better than the... Oh. The baseball people at the top, they are spineless, you know? Okay. That's oh, it. Yeah. Okay. All right. And the guy who bought the Marlins is a carpenter. Okay. Oh, okay. Because of the, because of the, of the stadium, not because of anything else. Yes. Oh. Okay. That's enough. Let's whisk him away because I don't want anyone to get in any trouble here. But that's how mad we are down here. That's yes. the mayor of Miami yes. speaking. That's, all right. That's, that's cute. That's, that is Miami's voice right there. Yep. Yes, Mike is scared. Guillermo's laughing. You guys all heard what he was saying before that. Boy, he cleaned it up. He cleans up good. We made it. Woo! Yeah. All right, Big Boy with us now. Sorry, sorry, Big Boy. Boomerverse, check it out. His album, Boomerverse, is available now. This guy makes good music, man. I've really enjoyed the last couple of albums he's put together. And you could uh, see tour dates. Bigboy.com is where you go. Big Boy, thank you for being on with uh, uh, with us. Are you smoking that gas, sir? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Wake, right. wake and bake, man. Yeah, I like for y'all to introduce me as the rain and champ. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I do have the belt. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that's only right. You can get the titles correct. Eight straight weeks. You're the champ. You're our champ. You're the champ. Eight, eight straight weeks. Nobody's done better than you. Method Man came after you this year. I think he did seven. Method Man came after you, but he stumbled at the end. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, no, you're not. Yeah, no, you're not. All right, so um, what's going on with you? What's going on? What? Uh, where can people check you out beyond bigboy.com? Like, what's going on with uh, Explain to people the music you're making these days so we can sell some of what you're selling. Yeah, um, well, I mean, I got the new album, Boomer Versus, out right now. Um, it's great. Uh, the new single, In the South, is with uh, Pimp C and Gucci Mane. Is out right now. I got the um, all the next singles coming out. It's called All Night. Uh, you might have heard it in, in the new Apple commercial for the new iPhone X. Um, it's doing real good for me and getting ready to start the second leg of my tour, the Daddy Fat Sacks tour. Uh, Sack two is starting um, January fifth in Canada, and we're going to hit the West Coast and come down through Texas. 
All right, so bigboy.com is if you want to check him out. We're going to get to our picks with him in a second. Was it the last time you were on with us? You were telling us about how close you guys were being to the Super Bowl, to being a Super Bowl act. Like, how might we see that at some point in the future? Do you think that that's outcast together on the Super Bowl is something we'll ever see? Uh, you just got to put it up in the universe, man. You know what I mean? Like, um, uh, it, would be a, it would be a great thing. It would be in Atlanta 2019. So, you know, we'll just see, man. Just pray to the to the most high and see what happens. What was it like to be with you at the end of that Falcons game last year? Um, It was like, uh, it was kind of like a blur. Because I didn't, you know, I was kind of, you know, just drinking juice until the third quarter, the fourth quarter. Then we started taking shots of tequila. You know what I'm saying? So right, it was a blur. Yeah. Oh, so wow. You yeah, thought it yeah, had yeah. it won. You were so drunk that you thought it was won. And then what? Oh, they were celebrating like second quarter, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, no, we were celebrating all the way to the to, to the, the, the halftime. And at the halftime, then the, the whole mood changed. You know what I mean? So, um, yes, yeah, the time I like to forget. Okay, we won't bring it up again. Yeah. Are you ready to pick yeah. games, yeah. sir? Are you ready to pick games and go on a run that ends Colin Cowherd for the season, sir? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Is let's there do is it. there anything you want to tell Colin Cowherd before you annihilate him here with your picks? Is there anything you'd like to say to him uh, so that he just knows what's coming? Um, I mean, just just good luck, man. Good luck, man. Good luck. All right, and keep it positive. Keep All, right. All right, you don't All want right. beef. You don't want to create beef. I was ho- I was kind of hoping to create beef. He lets his pick speak for itself. Yeah, man. I, he, he doesn't talk trash. He just makes his picks, and that's it. I know, it. but I, it's I'm the evil media. I was trying to create beef there, and I felt like it was <laughs> I felt like it was easy enough beef for you, big right. boy. Like I know you no, want no, to no, 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 no. positivity. No, I don't want to have I don't have, I don't want to have to see him in, in, in person and make his cheeks look like Santa Claus. Rose red, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Open right. hand. Now All we're right. getting somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? that, now we're getting somewhere. Thank now you. Now somewhere. we're getting somewhere. Let's stay positive. Uh, Colin Coward, come get this open hand. All right. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Let's go ahead and do Celebrity Prognosticator, please. And now it is time for Celebrity Prognosticator. Let's win some money. Hold on, let me do that better, Mike. I think you have uh, I, I think you have some imaging for this that would properly convey. Let me do it again. Let me try it again. Yes, Colin Cowherd, come here and get some of that open hand. I did sound very stiff, like I was going to slap him with my fencing glove. Uh, Broncos at Colts. Colts. <laughs> Colts plus two and a half. Who do you have, big boy? Uh, I think I'm going to take the Broncos. Chargers at Chiefs. Thank you for returning the music. Chargers at Chiefs plus one. Who you got? Um, I'm gonna take the Chiefs on that man. They're in a must win. They gotta win, man. Just just to make safe face. Patriots at Steelers. Steelers plus three. Who you got? Um, I think I'm gonna have to go with Tom Brady because what Miami just did to him last week. I mean, he was he was highly upset, and then you know this is big rivalry right here. So I think Tom gonna go off. Packers and Gronk is coming back too. Yes, that makes yeah. a difference. Yeah. Packers and Panthers. Panthers minus two and a half. Who you got? Um, with that one, I think I might have to go. Aaron Rodgers coming back. Um, I think I might have to go with Green Bay on that one. That's smart. Yeah. Falcons and Bucks. Who you got? Bucks are plus six. Um, Bucks. Bucks. Are- I know. I, I, I know, I know. I like the Falcons to win, but I don't know if they're going to win by six. I don't know. I got to make sure I get my blood pressure medication here because they'll get you down to the fourth quarter. And then, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking. I don't know if they're going to beat them by six, so I might have to go Tampa Bay on that. You've uh, you've met Julio Jones, certainly, yes, probably? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I met Julio Jones, but I also met Matt Ryan, and I also know that uh, three interceptions in seven minutes can happen more than once. So. <laughs> You know, I don't know. I think they'll, I think they'll beat them, but I don't know if they're going to beat them by six. All right, fair enough. All we right. look forward to uh, yeah. talking to you next week. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for being a part nah, of our I, lives. Thanks for being a part of our y'all lives. Know, y'all know what it is, man. Daddy Fat says, Libertad Show, man. We still blowing gas, laughing, stank on you. The pack is still loud. You feel me? That's what I wanted you, you to hit yeah. Colin Cowherd <laughs> with. Excellent. Yes, it's still loud. Good to have you back, sir. Thank you. All right, bro. Peace. Payday! Payday! It is payday! So strange, all of it. What? The show? What we're allowed to do. It's awesome. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern, on ESPN Radio, and you can watch on ESPNU.